folks. Welcome back. I'm the one, the only Hobo Tom. And I have so much for us to talk about. Because today was kind of my day off. Well, somewhat. Uh, I had a work at home. <laughs> Good time. The only thing was I had to wake up. I almost missed my sign in time. That would have been terrible if I missed that. That would suck. How are you late for an at home job? But that's okay. Um, I wasn't, so I'm good like that. Although I just had to roll over, roll out of bed, get on the computer. That for four hours, yeah, hey, I paid for that. So that's okay. Oh, that's right. I was hoping my kitty got some of her fluff off. I might have dropped body in that garbage though. Right, this is going to be another hour-long show, folks. We are ready to enjoy some pro wrestling. This is going to be the trifecta show. We're going to have NWA Impact, which I got to see the the, the replay of finally, and AEW. What pussy dinner? Possibly I had knocked me out. But let's start off. Talking about some NWA. Oh, also, let's see here. Wait, before we do that, probably something I'll cut there. Let's see here. I have some shout outs to give. El EO Del Smart Jr. Thank you for joining me. I think there were like 17 of us watching. And between NWA and Impact, you served one twice. Because you got that six count. Let's see here. What's someone else? Oh, yeah. Let's see here. Tamino with the plot. Yeah, I think I was talking about Aubrey's cute. Oh, wow. Did 
my video finished edit that? Let me let me say that a little bit louder. Yes. Tamina so, mean, with the plot. Yeah, I think you and I were talking about Aubrey's cute flat ass. Therefore, sir, you are master of Jordan's got back. Oh my god, Becky, look at her butt. I like big butts and I cannot lie. Dead men blaze. I don't know who you are, but thank you. I think you said yes to one of my comments or you or you commented on something I, I said. It's the only reason why I would remember that. You, sir, are a master of the air guitar. I think I, I think I think I think we've we've chatted before. Forgotten username. User has to crawl back and find out what your name was. Remember, if anyone, well, I have stuff to do tomorrow too, and later tonight after I hobo do my other job, I have to hurry up for. That's okay. Again, if you too would like your free video shout out, again, I'm not monetized yet, so eventually, I guess it'll be super chatted. I don't know. I have to figure out how I how how I do that. That's okay. I don't have to worry about that yet. But if you two would also like your dedicated video, you can do it a couple of ways. You can either email hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com, leave a comment. And if it's constructive, you'll get something positive. If not, well, it's happened in the past. You'll find out. Uh, how other ways? Yes, leave a comment on YouTube. And if you say subscribe to me, Subscribe to my channel. I'll subscribe to yours. I can do quid pro quo. Like that. I don't mind. It's stuff for everyone. Um, or you could interact with me on the Discord over at WooTube. Yep. And then I think if... Oh, also if you subscribe. It's the oldest... The most proven way to do it. So those three ways. Oh, some subscribers are anonymous though. I don't know. Most well, most of the time, if you subscribe, you have to leave an email. So, so or or YouTube or Gmail, whatever thing. That's okay. Yeah, those three or four ways. We lost. I feel a little nap after eight. Now you good. Nice big plate of mac and cheese. So good. And then listening to the common voice of Kevin Scampoli put me to sleep. 
Especially once you started talking about like basketball. I don't talk about basketball here. I talk about well right now some NWA wrestling. This is fun. Not as good as it's been in the past, but and I think a lot of things. This is that that weird lull, I guess, where they're getting ready. Literally, like WrestleMania season, like takes over everything. But so. A lot of the leagues, I mean, AEW is coming off an amazing pay-per-view. You, you know, whatever they're going to do is going to be a downer. Uh, NWA, they're going to do that kind of reaction show, I guess. I have to figure out how to do that. That would be so cool to do. And... <sighs> um, impact's just impact. Impact's always hit or miss. Uh, so let's start off with some NWA, National Wrestling Association, mat matches. Uh, so the first match, we have Zicky Dice taking on Ricky Starks. Wow, Dice is just wasting his time strutting because he's the outlandish Zicky Dice. Uh, when they get to it, though, it's classic mat wrestling. And then there's a mirror. To it. They're each doing push-ups in front of each other. Yep, that's pretty cool. Then So that was pretty cool. Then start, uh, the start... Strikes by Starks. Say that ten times fast. I uh, start to happen. Uh, Zicky, he takes it to the outside. That was some weird bocce tornado DDT, which turned into like a kind of turned into like a falcon's arrow. It was really weird. This match, for some reason, seemed a little bit on the sloppy side. Seemed a little bit botchy. Um, there was the atomic drop. Zicky dice sold out like a champ. I love my. I love my good atomic drop. One of the first wrestling moves I think I learned next is the pile driver. Pile driver is still the best. Atomic drops number number two though. Uh, Zicky dice. Did a sit down. Uh, oh yeah, he got, he got rolled up. Zicky dice just sat. Larry sat on Ricky Stark. Whoa, we have a new TV champion. That's impressive. I thought Ricky Starks was going to go all the way for the Lucky 7s rule. Apparently not. Zicky Dice is not getting to the Lucky 7s. I wonder... So that takes seven match. That's seven weeks. I wonder when the next pay-per-view is. Well, there's the Crockett Cup coming, I think, later in March? Or is it early April? Forget. I'll have to look, I'll have to look that up again. Yeah, so Zicky Dice is not going to challenge for the 10 pounds of gold, but whatever it was, it was fun. Zicky Dice, super excited. It was an okay match. Again, it wasn't crisp. It was kind of botchy. It was kind of sloppy. But still, eh, it was a ham sandwich of a match. Latimer called Joe over. Um, I guess because because his woman Camille is the greatest thing since F and sliced bread. Oh, and Camille's gonna speak. That's gonna be interesting. I don't know why I don't know why Latimer was cursing a show about it, but that's okay. Then there was a Nick Aldis and Marty Scroll press conference in the empty arena where they're eventually going to have their match during the Crockett. So yeah, that's be coming up in March. I don't know. I'll, I have to write that down on my calendar. I have to figure out when uh, Rey de Reyes is coming on too. That's AAA. No, I can't cover because I'm still on my suspension. I have my 30 days left. And then I'm all done with that. I get back to live streaming. I screw up again. Pry for Triple Mania. But that'll be so worth it though. Uh, then what else? There was a question mark in Aaron Stevens' promo. Uh, they call it the Rock and Roll Express. Faye Valentine and then her BFF Sal came out. Whoa. Listen, Faye Valentine's outfit, I thought she was like one shift away from, 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 from something slipping out. But on second look, uh, but Faye Valentine, you have to lay off. Oh. 
that, that, that nose candy. So it's just your eyes are like. I don't even think I can imitate it. I might have just done it, but yeah, when my best BFF I put out my lingerie line. I don't know, maybe that was it. I can't do that. I think that's one of the things you actually have to be on to do. Uh, what was that? Yeah, and then she was live vlogging, and all that powder went to her head. Roy Isaac comes out, he's not happy. I wouldn't be happy too if my girlfriend had a BFF of a guy that she dressed up in ponytails and makeup. Yeah. NWA. And then there was the last chance match the Dawson's taking on Caleb Conley and C.W. Anderson. Stipulation this match. I think contracts are coming up. And they want to make, they want to keep only the best of the best. Let's see if this affects that. There we go. We'll, we'll find out. I don't the shirt though. There, that sounds better. So we have the Dawson's taking on Caleb Conley and C.W. Anderson. Dawson's, they, for the start, again, these are two, two big hosses. I think. I think the combined weight was 590 some odd pounds versus like 400 something. That makes somewhat sense, though. Yeah, because that's 200 pounds twice. That's 300 and 200. So, yeah. That was like 590 something versus like 240 something. Jim Cornette would be happy. Uh, Dawson's jump, Caleb and C.W. Anderson. Uh, Caleb eventually does make his comeback. He gets caught, though. You never do a crossbody early in a match against a bigger guy. They always catch you. Even I learned that. Dave Dawson and eventually those two get out. Dave Dawson and C.W. Anderson's in the ring. And then that brutish clothesline. Oh, wow. That hurt. Uh, from there, uh, Caleb did the split legged drop kick to both Dawson's. Uh, C.W. low dub the one, low, low bridge the one, became a two on one. That was a springboard moonsault. Oh, my Caleb. That was so awesome. After a spine buster by C.W. Anderson. Caleb Conley and C.W. Anderson pick up the win. And we need a drink. Oh, you're a... Oh, oh, I love when they shout, You're a dead man. Yeah, not so much. You're the dead man, Dave Dawson. You lost. I'll tell you what. It was a fun match. A solid cheeseburger match. Then they had, so this is Lost Dawson's. Then we had the Pope, Beer City Bruiser, <laughs> and they channel Ric Flair. That was pretty weird. Um, and so again, you have the bouncers taking on Eli Drake and James Storm for the tag titles. This was actually, I'll tell you what, this was actually probably the best match of, no, I don't know, might it have been? No, it was up there though. It was probably like the second best match if I had to really order it. But um, the whole th opening thing is uh, the guy. The big guy, if I can pronounce his name right. Alamoru? Or, no. Malinus. Malinus was his name. Um, Drake tried to slam him. Nope. Couldn't happen. So, so Drake has to gain momentum. Does all the momentum moves. Again, elbows, drop kicks. Stuff that makes sense. Eli Drake's no dummy. He knows how to wrestle a big guy. And then James Storm, because they got Melanus down to a knee, so James Storm just started dropping knees. Smart. Get the big guy down. <laughs> yeah, James Storm said, come on, fat boy. Oh, wow. James Storm, you have to be very careful about what you ask for. Sometimes you might get it. Them fat boys, they they carry a lot of weight. Don't poke the bear. Uh, Kingston and Pope are outside. They just kind of eyeball each other. Uh, the Beer City Bruiser tries to bite, but 
He has that bushwhacker issue where he only has like two good teeth. So I don't see how a bike could be that useful. He's like literally has like two incisors. He has this incisor and like this incisor. So like they're even at opposite ends of the mouth. And just go ask Bert Baker what it is. I don't ask, don't don't tell me what it is. I don't care. I just know that the the one incisor is here, the other incisor is here. And I'm probably pointing to my canine teeth, but yeah, he's missing a whole bunch, so you never know. It could be a canine tooth. He just lost all his incisors. Again, Drake goes to the top rope drop kick. And smart. If you're going to take out the bear seed bruiser, big guy, low, low center of gravity. And go for the top rope. Use all your body weight plus gravity. Because gravity ex helps accelerate you 9.8 meters per second squared. You know, the basement drop kick to take out the knees. However, the bouncer did the double belly bump. Oh, I haven't seen a double belly bump in a long time. Again, that was just fun. Uh, James Storm to the Phoenix Splash. Then they there was a double body slam onto Melanus. The last call and the big elbow. E. Y. Drake. Oh. Onto Melanus. And this was a fun match. This was really good. This was a... I, I, wow, I'm shocked. It was a surf and turf match. And that is the one thing about NWA. Because it's only an hour long, it goes by so quickly. Especially if you... Well, sometimes when I watch it on YouTube, it's kind of fast forward all, all the garbage stuff. And there were a bunch of promos. Uh, some of them include, again, Melina... And Allison K. And I have to figure out when the Crockett. I have to write that. I have to write down a bunch of stuff on my calendar. Because I just turned the 1st of March. And I only have like the first two weeks written in. And I have to figure out my work schedule for who. And I have so much work next week. That's good though. Because I'm going to be swimming in quarters like Scrooge McDuck. So we're going to take a little break. And now it's time to talk about some Impact Wrestling. Because I just realized that on Wednesdays, they, they, have, a, they have a replay of Impact. I like that because that means I get to watch Impact Wrestling. On Wednesdays, when I have off, I watch four and a half hours of wrestling. My brain's fried. So, uh, first match starts off with Moose. Do, 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 do. Moose. Do, 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 do. Taking on Oh, Canada. I hate Canadians. Petey Williams. Petey Williams is still wrestling? Wow. And P.D. Williams is tiny compared to Moose. So this was a fun match. P.D. Williams definitely the quicker of the two. Well, I'll tell you what, Moose is no slush, but Mo Moose is just a brute. He has this brute size. Again, does typical big guy moves. Clotheslines, lariats, his forearms to P.D. Williams, where P.D. Williams tries to be more quicker. He goes for a momentum moves off the rope, off the top rope. Uh, P.D. Williams cannot hit his move, the Canadian Destroyer. Canadian Destroyer is a pile driver. It's a flippy pile driver. Get that right, folks. The Lucha Destroyer is a flippy, like, power bomb. So two different moves. Canadian Destroyer, Lucha Destroyer. I think I, I always have to correct people. I'm like, no, it's a Canadian Destroyer. No, Canadian Destroyer is a pile driver. Guys, vertical. And Lucha Destroyer, it's, it's like more on your upper shoulders. Upper back, pile drivers. Yeah, right, point of the head. Top of the head. Where my hair is not. Uh, can PD's quick, but Moose, I'll tell you what, it's shockingly quicker though. Um, he still, again, does the very typical heel miscues, runs into the ring post. That doesn't matter because he had the no jackhammer needed spear. Moose! Wins. 
in a good ham sandwich match. Then we have Madison running backstage. Um, she's making cuts of the women's division. Uh, one woman could not do jumping jacks. Uh, the other woman showed up in an evening dress. Kira Hogan shows up. Uh, some other woman steps up and says, I'll take you on Kira Hogan. Madison Rain approves of her. So they're making cuts. We'll get into that. But they're... Um, Get tough or or whatever their their program is, which actually seems kind of interesting, and it seems more of a work than a shoot, which is weird. And then the next match was Joey Ryan taking on AC Romero. Wow, I remember seeing AC Romero. I think when they went to Mexico, and AC Romero, he's one big boy, even though they say he lost weight, pretty big. Of course. Joey Ryan has to offer people a lollipop. It's Lent, so I cannot have a lollipop. So he, he just sticks it right down his pants. I guess the front part is the better than the back. The best would, I guess, be the side. But yeah, Don Cows. Don Cows is so funny. But Don Cows looks like he's like, he has something though. There's a disease and not coronavirus. Please, people. I'm getting sick of the coronavirus nonsense. It's it's probably a hiccup. It's bad. I think from what I've heard, it's like getting like a nasty version of the flu. It's a little more lethal than the flu. I think the flu like it's like one point two percent fatality rate. Flu uh no, it's much smaller than that. Like point something percent, point like point nine percent fatality. Uh, coronavirus is like two percent fatality. When you take a look at a global picture, it's like really a drop in the bucket. Which probably means I'll probably get it. But I said bad stuff. Up. And if you think about it, if you have a fairly strong immune system, like this guy. So when I was a kid, we were told to go play outside, climb trees. Swim in lakes, like go do stuff and boost your immune system. Unlike wussy kids nowadays that sit and play video games. I don't want to go outside. I still like to go outside. It's just in Florida, it's weird. It's either too hot or too cold. There is that, although heat is good to lose weight in. My cat enjoys it. But every so often, we'll go outside and play. But enough about that, though. Um, so, t AC, AC's a big guy. Hey, Ryan, you cannot shoulder tackle a guy that big. That's not happening. Uh, and AC, AC did tried like a half fun splash. He like barely got off the ground when he jumped. And that was the slowest corner splash I've ever seen. Um, and then there was no dog flip. Joy Ryan saying he said, just turn a corner. He's saying, I'm trying to get away from being a gimmick. I want to I want to do pro wrestling right. <laughs> Wait a second. That sounds like a Chiefs reference from Slapshot. You want to go out playing old school hockey. None of this sideshow side show circus freak stuff of fighting. Because they are trying to... I think they're trying not to just outlaw fighting in hockey. It's always been fighting in hockey. But I guess, I don't know, it's a lot faster, it's a lot more technical now. It used to be like two guys on the ice and fight. And just like um, a hockey song by Warren Zippo. The hockey, ooh. Send someone the hockey song. I miss that hockey song. Sweet to the right, a Russian on. Sweet to the right, Canadian on the left, a Russian at the blue line, picking for a fight. And yeah, I forgot how the rest. Of it, I don't even think that's the way it goes. But yeah, you understand the reference, I hope. And I'm not singing that song. 
That's a kind of hard song to sing. You know, it's more like a spoken word almost. That's okay. This is wrestling, not ice hockey. Uh, again, no dong flip. Instead, you got sidewalk slams to an elbow. Uh oh. Joey Ryan lost. He he did not do his finisher moves. He cannot do sweet tooth music. Um, AC Romero wins. It's a surprise. Again, that seeing that half fun splash and that that slow mo corner splash. Yeah, I can run faster than that. I could I could do a fun splash. I could get higher off the ground. And of course, there's the Miami Vice reference. Bunk Callis is great. It's like the '80s were great. I wish you could be the '80s all the time. All oh, the coke, Don Callis. All oh, the coke and hundred dollar bills. <laughs> oh, by the way, we did see a hundred dollar bill with like vicious white powder on it. Oh yeah, <sighs> but. <laughs> Uh, this is really eh, a ham sandwich of a match. There's a Willie Mac, um, Glenn Gilberney, and Johnny Swinger promo. Uh, Katie Forbes, RVD, and Joey Ryan. They also had a promo backstage. Katie Forbes is such a hot piece of ass. I don't even know what outfit she wears. It's just, it's just there to thought. That somewhat covers taint. Oh yeah, that was the line they like. They like when I covered Impact. I think last week they're like, "That is the best line ever." It's like somewhat covers. What? Yep, that's all our outfit did. Uh, even this match was kind of a ham sandwich. Uh, it was Jessica Havoc taking on Sue Young. Uh, Havoc, she's so strong. She's about ready to come out of that that push up bra was working overtime. I'll tell you what. She, if she bounced the wrong way, yeah, something would come bouncing up. Sue Young just looks like uh, Start off so strong, throws Sue Young to the outside, and, and then Jessica Havoc starts to throw everything in the ring because this is a, like, it's a no-DQ match. It's a hardcore match. Uh, chairs go in the ring. So many chairs. The chairs. What else was there? A kendo stick. And, of course, Josh says, why do we have kendo sticks under the ring? Uh, she took a trash can out. Hangman's noose. And the crowd wanted tables. But got no tables. Uh, so, again, because she brought all this stuff, they started to have a dueling chair, chair spot. Ouch! Oh, the hands. The reverberation. And then Young got kicked. And, and she legit, like, banged her head on, on that can. Because that was not meant to happen. Uh, Havoc again has a clubbing shot. So then they start to trade blows. And then she tied, Jessica Havoc tied Sue Young to the middle rope. Grab said kendo stick. But then he did that again. <sighs> missed it! Oh, the red mist! The fiery red mist! Because the green mist is poison. The red mist is fiery. The black mist is like. Instant paralysis. That's like the definition of mist. So she got red misted, so her eyes were on fire, even though it was kind of weak looking. It wasn't that nice bright red. This was like really watered down red. It, it was no way either. The great mood is green, green mist. It wasn't. Oh. The Japanese buzzsaw is red mist. Wasn't even Asuka's green mist. That was like pretty green looking. Although again, if you have blonde hair, just ask Ric Flair. And everything turns colors if you have blonde hair. The red mist came out. The mandible claw, claw came out. Got out of that. But then she found that rope with a noose. And wow, she stuck that. She put that hangman's noose around the neck of Jessica Havoc. In the mandible claw. Listen, these two, they they need, they need to bleed. That forehead is too smooth. That titty flesh is too smooth. Ooh, they need a little cut there. They need a juice, baby. 
in a hardcore match like this. And Sue Young reverted back to her old way. She, she summoned from the darkness the undead bridesmaids of the coffin. Uh, they try to stick havoc in a coffin. No, she wasn't having fun. She fights off the bridesmaids and then runs away. I wonder if for Impact's next pay per view or big show, if they're going to have a coffin match. Because, I don't know, that's what these two seem to need. This match, again, overall, yeah, even vanilla for, for, a, for a hardcore no DQ match, it's a ham sandwich. And we, oh, that was good. We had Johnny Swinger and Glenn Galberni versus the Deaners. Woohoo! I didn't realize the Deaners were like rednecks from Canada. So they're from Windsor, Ontario. That's weird. I thought they were from like deep south somewhere, like Louisiana ish. That's how much I know about pro wrestling. Our cousin Jake is too strong for Glenn Gilberni. Winger and and Cody then exchange arm wingers and arm bars, kind of really basic match. This was actually fun. Then they, of course, the Deaners double team. Then Glenn Gilberti. Oh yeah, yes. So go into the trunks. Hmm. Ah, yep, there it is. Pull out something. Pull out roll of quarters. Make his fist a little bit more denser. And it's already hitting. <laughs> Poor Cody Deaner in the, in the face and neck. And that should really knock him out. Either that or, or he just needs to wear just brass knuckles. And just get it matched in that way. Again, if a ring can knock someone out, I'm pretty sure a fistful of quarter rolls should be able to knock someone out too. Uh, so, it's just, so then uh, Glenn and Johnny Swinger pass the rolls back and forth to each other. And then Don Kals was calling <laughs> Glenn Gilberti's moveset. Oh, here we go. Like right, bef like, right before he did it up. Oh, here we go. Side Russian leg sweep to the disco elbow. And, yep, side Russian leg sweep to disco elbow. Wow, Don. Either you have the script in front of you, sir, or you know way too much about pro wrestling. Uh, again, so they kind of switch things. Cousin Jake gets back in. That's pretty good. Uh, of course, there's a heel miscue leads to a Diener DDT. The Diener's win! Yes, 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 yes. Actually, this match was getting better. Uh, she's bringing her match. Yeah, but before this, there was this whole thing with Rosemary. Uh, Rosemary says, no, my plan's not supposed to work. We're supposed to bring the bunny back. I have news for you, Rosemary. The bunny is in AEW. And she's probably stuck in AEW. Because she's with, the, she's with the butcher and the blade in a meat shop somewhere. That sounds terrible. Uh, then there was another ICU thing. I don't want to see where this is going because someone's hacking in. I bet she was Melissa Santos. Melissa Santos is hacking in. And she's the leader of ICU. So I have no idea what... Oh, ICU. I almost get it. I... Like, I see you. I know. I'm thinking too much. I just realized that, though. Then, Daniel Dashwood. Um... He's doing like an Emelina repackaging. Not a fan of this. Listen, Neil. This did not work in WWE. It sure as hell ain't gonna work in Impact. And then we get to the main event of the evening, which for the Impact Championship. Oh, um, before this, they had a, like, wherever their reality show was. Tony Gunn, that actually sounds like a cool wrestling name. I don't know if this is a work or a shoot, because Johnny Bravo's being, like, way too tough and way too much of, of a dick. 
these guys. Because Tony Gunn also looks in way too good shape just to be on the game show for fun. Like, normally when they did this, I think at the power plant for WCW, like, I think only one or two of the people, maybe f at most four out of 20, like, actually wanted to become pro wrestlers. Like, like I know there was this, like, one out-of-shape redneck dad. He's like, I'm not doing up-downs. the hell is that? Uh, and, like, some other woman was, like, exhausted after running the ropes, like, twice. Yeah, I could do it probably, like, ten times, but then I'd be, then I'd, I don't know, running the ropes isn't too bad. It's the up-downs constantly. But you can kind of work around that. And then... <laughs> yeah, there was there was one woman I think whose whose boobies were way too big to be a pro wrestler. Again, there was some some other fat bastard, and there was always there's always that one girl that was in shape, and like the two or three guys that were in shape that were actually in pro wrestling shape. But I think they it always used to be like I think one of them was like a NCAA wrestler, the other was like cut from a. NFL team, so kind of athletes to start with. So all these guys, for the most part, look like athletes. So I don't see where the real drama is because they've all been in the indies. Now they want to come to the Impact Dojo. And okay, whatever. Again, the name Tommy Gunn just sounds. That sounds like that's it's so indie. That's like the indie of it. But enough about that. Uh, next, final match, the main event of the evening was Ty Valkyrie taking on Tessa Blanchard. Um, Tessa Blanchard looks short, but she still looks she looks short compared to Taya. She looks smaller compared to Taya, but, but Taya, Taya is just amazing. Big. And, and a booty to match. Uh, Tessa Blanchard, she still, has, she still has a jaw of China. She's a Chinette. She's a little bit smaller. I didn't realize how much taller Ty Valkyrie is. And I don't think Ty Valkyrie is that tall. I just think Tess is short. But she still looks like a good female wrestler. She has musculature. She's not skeleton like 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 some like some people, Britt Baker. And she has definitely more more body weight than others. <sighs> So again, uh, Ty had patted Tess on the head. She, nope. Head, nope. Tess is not having any of it. She goes to town. Taya slaps, forearms, clotheslines, all, all the typical stuff. Uh, decent striking by Tessa. Again, but she gets distracted by Johnny Bravo. Johnny Bravo, he, he's there. He's training people and he's being a valet. Uh, Tessa. Thing got distracted on the outside, uh, got tossed into the steps. She missed something. Ooh, that just sounds bad. I know they're hollow, so it just sounds worse. But still, running to steal steps can't be good for you. Uh, Ty eventually shows her frustration, just bangs her head. Well, takes takes Tessa by the head and just bangs her head against the the mat. There was some like. Weird thing they screwed up too. It was like a modified something, and it was it's just a weird. That was a weird odd odd power bomb spot. It's like Tess couldn't really get her up. It was weird. Had to try and pin attempt and jury pin. She looked for the road for Valhalla. Eventually, uh, Tess again. She tried something. She like missed Magnum, which was kind of it was a weird miss. It was like one of them was out of position. I couldn't figure out which one. Hit the buzzsaw DDT. And she won the match. She retained, and it wasn't that bad. It was a cheeseburger of a match. And overall, I mean, impact still impact. So, eh. Ham sandwich of a show. Whoa. 
wonder if you guys heard that. I know it's bike race coming up soon, so. So those are my elimination chamber notes. So let's take a little mother break. And I'll try to wind this up as quickly as I can because I've been talking for about 45 minutes. Uh, now we're at AEW. AEW. So this show is probably going to be like an hour or something. John Moxley comes out. That was so great. And the stupid idiot fans show up when Chris Jericho shows up to counter whatever Moxley's saying. He's like, you stupid idiots can't even chant in unison. That was funny. Oh, then knows that the you suck ass. I want to know. I have to ask. I have to ask Becca if TNT actually edits all, all this curse again. So I'll tell you what, that crowd was ruckus. Although Chris Jericho did call John Moxley the lunatic fringe. <sighs> Can't make infringement. Oh no, copyright law. I hope WWW goes after Jericho just as the they went after me. That would be, that at least, hey. Fair is fair, right? Uh, but I called this though at the AW Revolution. It was Dark Order versus SCU. It generally broke down. Cole Cabana had to make the save. So I said, you know what? There's going to be an eight man tag, baby. Holla, holla. And there was. It was SCU and Cole Cabana taking on the Dark Order. I'll tell you what, this was kind of, this was actually the. Best match of the night, probably. Uh, Cole Cabana is just so fun to watch. He's such a good worker. Uh, Dark Order, Cole Cabana's in the ring. Dark Order just like, yep, you know what? Let's sign everyone in the ring. Uh, again, the double boots in the corner. Um, both the other two Dark Order people put their boots up on the rope. Evil Uno sent Cole Cabana crashing into their boots. That was just it was fun. But leg drops, drop splash. Leg drop, and then this follow splash by Kazarian SCU is just so fun. And again, all eight men in the ring. Yep, always happens. And actually, all four members of SCU jump in. Uh, then there was a sequence there, which was really good. It was like uh, they isolated one of the lesser members of the Dark Order. It was an uh, elbow smash, elbow smash, apple strike, whatever that is. I heard apple strike. I'm like, huh. Oh. I think the Cole Cabana move and a wrecking ball drop kick from Kazarian. That's pretty good. Um, for the most part, there was tag team isolation, especially by the Dark Order. They beat up poor Christopher Daniels a lot. Uh, he tried to fight out of the Dark Order's corner. He couldn't every so often. However, Kazarian eventually does get the hot tag. He cleans house. And then, of course, everyone in the pool again. Again, there's a man in the ring. Referee can't handle that. Three members of the Dark Order get tossed out. Evil Uno tosses out Colt Cabana. He's like, yes, I have vanquished Colt Cabana. And then he turns around and sees that all three members of SCU are still in the ring, though. So now it's a triple team on Evil Uno. Uh, there was a sling and cutter, which is great. Uh, Cabana did the boom strikes. The ice, 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 moon salt. There was the Chicago Skyline followed by the Superman pin. And, whoa, SEU and Cole Cabana won. That was awesome. And then Evil Uno took the mic and said, the, the exalted one won't be happy. Wait. Let's just, let's just wait for Matt Hardy to come. So, But this was really fun, though. I'll tell you what. This was probably the best match of the night. This was a really, for the most part, a surf and turf match. And there's a recap of the tag team match. Uh, Britt Baker shows up. Oh, God, Britt, just shut up. No one cares what you have to say. Because then there was a women's match. Yeah, there was there was a women's match. Uh, it was Big Swole taking on Leva Bates. That opening... I don't even think Leva Bates... Leva Bates got the chopper's entrance. She just, like, showed up. Big Swole showed up to the music. Eva Bates slapped Big Soul. Big mistake. She actually hit a backstab, but that was the end of her offense, though. Uh, Soul hit a cutter, then dirty dancing, couple strikes before that, and gee whiz, that was a short match. 
Big Swole one. Can of soup, folks. The match was kind of fun. Cody came out uh, during the break, I think, on whatever system I watched. He was talking to the audience. He's like, he's like yeah, this is our cameraman, Jamie. So the whole crowd goes, hi, Jamie. Whoever, whoever they announced, yep. And Bird's there on the mobile camera. Hi, Bird. Uh, I forget who else he, he mentioned the doctor, and they all like, boo hoo Go boo the doctor. Uh, so <laughs> Cody got everyone to pop. I was a like, Cody and MJF. Recap a little bit. Uh, Cody, he has the grandest entrance of them all, of course. He calls up MJF, but no. MJF doesn't show up. Jake the Snake Robert shows up. Never trust a snake. He says, like, the dark side's coming. And then he called Arn Anderson a one-trick pony. Oh, wow. And then, is this going to be, like, a second Dark Order? Is this, like, with Brody Lee or Lance Archer? We shall see. Then the next match, well, the third match was Chuck Taylor taking on Pac. Um, this was kind of a losing match, a really slow start. Very different. Aubrey got more cheers than the wrestlers did, which is kind of sad. Even though Aubrey has such a flat conservative booty, conservative butt. Still, it'd be nice to see her in a bikini. Oh, that and her red lipstick. And the, that bright red lipstick, too, by the way. Uh, and of course, in any Pac match, we have the one song. I am the barricade. I am the barricade. I am the barricade. Yep. Uh, then there was a suplex to the outside of the ring. Uh, Chuck Taylor got him inside, hit the Falcon Arrow after he missed something. And there was a blue waffle. What the heck's a blue waffle? But he took a second chance, missed the moonsault, got blocked into the brutalizer. Yep. Pac wins. Just stares at Chuck Taylor a little bit more than Trent. Trent comes in. Uh, Trent Breda comes in, so does Orange Cassidy. And then the Lucha Brothers show up. And we have another trios. We have the Death Triangle. Or Triangular de la Muerta. If I got that Spanish right. I don't think I did, but I'll ask tomorrow at work. Triangular de la Muerta. So what does that mean to you? I want you to stare at me and say, your Spanish is so awful. Stop speaking it. But that's okay. Uh, this, I don't know. This was just... Compared to the match Pac had with Orange Cassidy, I know I should take everything separately, but this just seems slower plotting. This was a eh, ham sandwich. Again, whenever the ref gets a bigger pop than wrestlers, you know it's nothing good. Uh, then QT Marshall showed up, along with Dustin Rhodes, and Brandy. Oh, Brandy. You should always. Brandy's an 11 out of 10. 11 out of 10. Yes. And they had like fake apples that were autographed and they just started to toss them. I'm like, wait, wait a second. I want an apple too. But, no, only for the live crowd. Uh, so QT Marshall is taking on Jake Hagar. They got really dropped QT. Like two shots. Power slam. He went, uh, Jake Hagar went for a, a Vader bomb. QT got the feet up. QT tried to get, he did the Mariposa. And standing arm something, I don't know, a little bit of offense. And QT Marshall, for the most part, this was a squash match. Again, Jake hey, Hagar got that arm triangle in. Eh, I'm not a fan of it. Not not a fan of the standing arm triangle. Just way too easy. Just drop to your knees. Drop to your butt. And you're out of it. So QT Marshall was out. And then, of course, Santana Ortiz got in the ring. Dustin got in the ring. Again, now you have three on two. Actually, for a while, it was three on one because QT Marshall was still out. 
So then Cody Rhodes comes running in. Brandy Rhodes is just there at ringside. Cody's probably like, Brandy, help me. Um, again, the match itself was a can of soup. And then Matt Jackson showed up. And then Hangman Adam Page showed up. He came into the ring, into the ring, beer in hand. Oh, so great is Hangman Adam Page. Kind of surveyed the thing, went through the ropes with the beer in hand. Kind of looked around. Yep, oh, had another sip. Oh, let me put this on top of the turnbuckle. Now it's time to, to clean house. And then I'm going to go back to my beer. I gave a beer nod to... So Dustin Reynolds, a beer nod to QT, beer nod to Cody, and just like spit in the face of Matt Jackson. Such such the dagger stares. He goes out. Everyone gives. He finishes his beer. Fan gives him his beer. Whoa! Those fans in the front row have money. That's a ten dollar beer they're giving away. And then he just started to collect beers. I can't fault him for that. Adam Page is so good. And there was a sign saying, MJF is a wank pheasant. Wow, the boys from Cult of Hall will be happy to hear about, about that. And then we have our maybe event of the evening. And wow, this show was quick. We had Chris Jericho taking on Sammy Guevara, or uh, Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara taking on Darby Allen and John Moxley. Um... Chris Jericho and Sammy Berry came in first. Darby Allen was next. Moxley came in through the crowd. But then he got jumped by the inner circle. Oh, he got beat up all over the place. And that's the real way, folks, to do the head and arm triangle. Get your opponent on the ground. Your, his arm over your shoulder. So that shoulder's right there, cutting off blood flow. Scoop, put your arm around the neck. I think you can do either way, S grip or Gable grip, whatever. I just squeeze. Yep, and that's the proper way to do an arm triangle. Finally, we had the so they had the doctor taking a look at Moxie because I know if you hold that on for like I think like six seconds, you're out. I think like twelve seconds. Like they're like okay. Now you have brain damage, and then anything after, I think, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, I think anything after, like, 14 or 15 seconds, that's it. It doesn't take long, because you're literally starving the brain of blood. And it's not one of those things that'll just, like, ooh, pop back up again. Because you literally, your brain's getting no oxygen. And they say it's like the, the, the weird, quiet way to go to sleep because you're not really struggling because you can still breathe, but there's just nothing getting to the brain. We're not enough getting to the brain. Um, so then back in the ring, it turns into a two-on-one on, two and then eventually a five-on-one. Uh, Darby Allen hit the coffee drop. And then Chris Jericho was, was the best. He got dropped. I toe hold into the steel steps. Chris Jericho's the best. A dog on the outside is taking everyone apart. However, once it becomes five on one, yep. Uh, there was a vertical suplex on Darby, plus a trade off. Sammy Guevara had him up, held him up, passed him up to Chris Jericho. The passing and, and taunting by both Sammy and Chris Jericho is the best. Uh, he did he did get the knees up. Uh, Darby Allen did get the knees up when Chris Jericho attempted the line salt. It was a Lucha Destroyer by Darby Allen, and then he went for the coffin drop. But he tried to dive to the outside, but then he ate the Judas effect that rolled in for the pin. Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara win. A Moxie comes back to the ring with chairs. However, there's still five on one, and he just gets beat up pretty bad. And eventually he gets powerbombed through the table. And then they told Moxley. You're number one in our book. And this match, eh. It was a cheeseburger match. Really hard to complain about it. Let's see if I can take out. Well, I can actually take out those two pages. That was AEW. 
I'll tell you what, for some reason, especially after watching the pay-per-view, this is a really pedestrian show. But, eh, that was a ham sandwich of a show. And that was wrestling for both Tuesday and Wednesday. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. I'll get this video up as soon as I can. Uh, Thursday, there, tomorrow there's going to be two videos. It's going to be my two-year anniversary here on YouTube. So I'm putting up a special show. I have to make that. I think a little intro. Uh, welcome into the Hobo Studios. And then my predictions. And I might have... I don't know. We'll see what happens. I might do that tomorrow, too. That's pretty quick. I might have Dr. Tom show up tomorrow. That show, that show will be later. That's okay. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And, well, you'll see me tomorrow, and I'll see everyone else for um, probably Friday or, and or Saturday, and, and then Sunday for Elimination Chamber. Bye!